sponsor's 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go. It is a Monday night. It is 9 o'clock. And uh, it is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable mod master. That is Mark. Um, firstly, thank you very, very much, everybody, for asking um, recently how my back has been. Um, I've managed to stop taking painkillers now, and, um, and it is most definitely on the mend. However, you know, try to push it, and, and it sort of um, can sort of... Twinge, but twinging is, is good. Twinging is very, very good. Um, I've been trying to sort of get it up and running, obviously, because, uh, you know, I'm running and all this and the other. For, for I've got to get my dancing shoes on, um, because on the 19th um, of this month, obviously, is World Vaping Day. There are many events going on all over the shop. Um, but myself and Mark are not Mark. Mark's not going to be there. Super 7, Doug, is, is, we're doing this, he says. So the hub, the Hope, I've got new. I need new teeth. And um, the Hope Pub, Carl Shorten, is where we will be. Um, I'm going to shoot my chair tonight as well because it is squeaking like a bugger. Um, lots and lots of guys. We were all watching earlier. We sat there in, in chat, and I don't know if you've seen it. The um, Costa Concordia, um, the the rising of that, the most expensive sort of rising of a ship in in history. Um, so absolutely stunning footage there. Uh, you know, it seems to be going very, very well. Um, as as is Mark's mod, um, and uh, you know, I did. I'm I'm writing to those people to see whether I can actually borrow um, that device once they've got the ship upright, because I could really use that some nights in our house to shift the wife. Yeah, it, it, it's got great potential that thing. Um, this week, Mark's been cracking on with his um, Mega Tin. Um, actually, finishes it today. Um, stunning, stunning. <laughs> it's really good. Um, watched the vids myself on that one, and um, an absolute cracking bit. I had a bit of a mixed week. Um, the, I started on the pipe again, um, and, uh, and and it didn't go wrong. But um, obviously, not realising, I sat there on a Saturday to film the damn thing, and um, obviously, I've got to allow a little bit of time for um, for the treatments and all this that, and the other to to fit you know to, to dry and soak into the wood so um i've got a bit of a mixed bag um so two non-starters um from me but uh let's have a look back in two well we're back in the room once again for another week and i do have this back on the bench today um the little uh <clears throat> sort of pipe i'll say the huge pipe um that we were making if you haven't seen or sort of caught up before, we, we have literally taken this from an offcut of, of cherry tree, um, shaped all this up and all that um, sort of stuff. Um, I've left it for a few weeks, purely because a lot going on. Um, Dump me back in and, uh, and new lathes and, and bits and pieces. But I have been spending quite a bit of time finishing this down with a, a, a 180 grit paper and what I intend to do is give it a first coat um, in a minute just to sort of see roughly where that's getting to. Now I want to get the first coat on it will show me where I need to sand and, and this that and the other and it will show me what sort of grain I'm going to or pattern I'm going to get on the grain on, on this wood. I'm hoping it did show promise. Um, I don't know, it may well not do. Uh, but I will say, this won't be for the duration of today. Um, I do have some other bits to look at, purely because once this is has had its first coat, um, I'm going to have to leave that for sort of 24 hours to uh, harden off, and then I'm going to start filming to do some of the, um, uh, the fitments, but probably not for this week. I have been playing, and you see I had a new toy last week, on the lathe um, and I've now treated up this little uh, thing. I was trying some shapes basically 
Um, but this is a uh, effectively going to be a I don't know what you call it pestle and mortar thing. Um, I want to turn a little bowl out of cherry, and you know, this is going to be treated with a food safe stuff at the moment. It's uh, it's stained, and I've been speaking to somebody who's going to point me in the right direction as, as to getting a if you like a food grade um, finish final finish on this. Um, I did have another play. Um, I was talking to somebody who said, if you want to practice your, your skills on, on the wood lathe, um, and he sent me a picture of a, uh, if you like, an old police truncheon, um, and said, have a got one of those, and, and, and they're quite good. So I've turned this on the wood lathe as well. Um, basically, just trying to, I'm using scraps of wood. This is oak that was, you know, that was a quid from B&Q. It was a stair rail. Um, and I downloaded a sort of a, a pattern to go to and, and uh, there's that little, little truncheon thing. Um, so yes, I am getting to grips with it. I, I, I've obviously, you know, working a lot safer, um, this set and the other on the lathe now. I've got my rest in the appropriate position and all that sort of stuff. Back to the pipe. I'm going to give it a, a first coat with um, what I like, which is boiled linseed oil. Um, this one's from B&Q um, and it gives a very, very nice durable finish. Um, I've used it before. Um, it's very easy to apply um, and uh, as I say, uh, this is my first coat really just to see um, you know, how it's going to take, where it's going to go, this there and the other. Um, and what sanding I'm going to need before I start wiring up the pipe. Um, I know there are some blemishes on here. Um, I don't know how they're going to look when, when they're treated. So I'm just going to start applying a little bit of this linseed oil onto the pipe. Or pipe-esque thing, I think it's best called. Just to see where we're going to start going with it. dribbling it all over the place but this stuff is is relatively as I say easy to work with it's um I know it's going to give a nice you know, like deep deeper finish to this cherry it's the same sort of stuff I've used on the when I made the other mod out of this same material and straight away I can see as expected where I needed to uh, to, to show a bit more care and attention This is probably going to zap this up, this first treatment, and it's going to zap it. Always good. Get some in your hole. I'm just going to take off some of the excess with this stuff I've got here. The one thing they say with this boiled linseed oil, if you're using this in your workshop, don't leave any rags laying around because for some reason they can spontaneously combust. That's showing us what sort of finish we're going to be getting on the pipe. It's a slippery boogery right now. Um, I can see, and I thought I would have to, there is a blemish down in that edge that I've got to take off and one to the other side. Uh, I may have a rethink on this and I may take this stem, shorten that right down. I'm not sure yet. Like I say, I'm going to treat this thing now like a, uh, this is a hospital job. I'm going to drop on and off of this because the next bits are going to take quite a bit of time to sort of uh, get done. But when that is sort of that colour, if I can locate my switch that I was going to drop in there, Hold on a second. this isn't the exact switch, but one of those gold switches is 
is going to sit really nice in there when that's done. So that's what we're sort of aiming for. Now, as that darkens down, the patterning will will sort of take to the patterning, but I've got a lot more rubbing and sanding and bits and pieces to do first. Pop away, come back in two. Well, now we've got all the bits together. Uh, everything's pretty much sorted. It should just be a matter of putting it all together in the right order, it should be fairly simple. So, I'll start off with the battery compartment, which is going to sit something like that. So I'm going to want to shorten the negative to about there. And that's going to run straight into the center on this switch. And then from there, I need a negative. Well, I've got the negative for the display. And I want to run a negative to the inside on this board, which is that one there. So I'm just going to strip off the wires and get soldered. That's the negative on there. And actually, I need this shorter so. So, first off the negative from the box is going to go straight to this, so that will have the effect of switching off the entire circuit for when we don't want to use it. fiddly getting the wires through these little holes but not too bad on this side I need two negatives to go through the holes and I just twist the two together Probably easier. So I'm just quickly sort of that one off. Turn up those two wires. And just turn up the joint. And for the positive, this is going to need to run all the way up to the switch position. So I might as well just use the wire as it is. Pop the switch in first. And just screw it into place, which I can't see, so I'll have to do it off camera. I've got the switch in place now, nicely screwed in, and similarly to what I've done on the negative switch, I've twisted the positive wire from the 
box and the display together on the unswitch side so the display will stay on whether the button's pressed or not and then from this side it'll just be a matter of taking a wire back down to the board but first I need to solder this wire into place now these switches won't take a lot of heat so I need to solder as quickly as possible Like so. And then and put from the board, from the switch rather, to the board. Just needs to sit on the other side. Let's solder the hose in place. So now what we're left with is two wires for the board. What's a negative in? A negative. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. Um, that tin is, is really coming along um, and it gets finished um, in today's episode. Um, I did notice in chat somebody said, um, am I a professional wood thingy? No, I'm not. Um, you only need to go back a very few months to to see my first attempt at um, complete wood failure. Um, yeah, but I have been I've been playing, and the reason I've been playing with with you know the wood stuff in the lathe, um, it's a big old beast, and and I'm trying to tame it, trying to learn how to use it. Watching a lot of videos, um, I've actually joined the there's a, a wood turners association that meet quite locally. Um, so I've joined that to, to try and get a bit of help and advice on, on working with the wood um, with the aim of, of, as I say, putting some some mods together with it. Um, this weekend played with a candlestick holder, which holds a candle, believe it or not, um, just to play with different shapes. Um, from there, I did I have gone on um, and started, uh, I've done a couple of the, you know, you're not going to be able to see that because of the lighting, but a couple of the little drip tips as well that have sort of started started to come together um, so hopefully I'm, I'm sort of working up to actually trying to do a mod on the lathe um, on the wood lathe and incorporate the metal lathe as well um, hopefully that's that's a plan and I haven't lost a limb yet I've been doing a lot of research on, on how to, to use it properly um, and I'm going to a, a meeting on Wednesday um, this Wednesday uh, to meet some other wood turners as well so uh, get some some more Safety, safety advice more than I'm after and uh, and how to use the tooling. Um, let's slip into our first little air break, um, pop back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Weber and I Weber Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-Alexa.co.uk. Pro sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. Flights sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we are back in the room once again. Um, yes, somebody somebody popped a question up in chat and it was literally Wood Turners Association and um, and question mark. It, it's essentially <laughs> people that turn stuff with wood, they, they have a, a monthly meeting um, where you can pop along and they have tools that you can buy there and free wood and stuff like that um, and obviously talk to, to people that are or have many many more years experience because I've got about three weeks of that um, in using a wood lathe um, mainly as I say for the safety aspects and and to, to look and, and chat and they talk about the finishes and this and the other and how to get the best out of it um, which hopefully will come in the form of a mod um, very shortly as I say. Let's crack on. Um, uh, this was my second little uh, look at something this week um, which is where I was going to go. Um, have a look at this. Alright so while my wood soaks up the um, the oil um, and uh, it's going to be there for a good 24 hours soaking that up um, I've got something here. Obviously I've got my DNA which uh, very very shortly going to start on. Um, what I'm going to look at in the meantime of finding a suitable box is this bog roll. Um, now, this bog roll arrived um, from uh, Coops on uh, UK Vapors, the UK Vapors. Um, and within this toilet roll is a bag of bits. Now, I've made no promises, um, and he knows I've made no promises, but he's given me this bag of bits and said, Would you turn it into its former glory. Now, I don't know if you can hear clanking of metal. Now, I'm going to be very, very careful as I take this out because there are various bits and pieces and screws and all sorts in here. And if you haven't already guessed what this is, this is in fact a Darwin. Um, one of Sav's favourite devices, the Darwin, and it's obviously seen better days. Um, there's a lot of gunk in there. I take it the gunk is from the uh, from the switch mechanism and this that, and the other. Now there are a couple of bits that are up with this. Firstly, I think that the uh, the switch is totally gone. Um, completely and utterly missing um, this little switch here which has got to be soldered back on now let's have a look oh, how far we can get down in there but this thing here woo, I'll put it on the battery that tiny little thing there should go across here um, and I believe this is the reset switch now I've got to try and solder that back on that is going to be incredibly difficult um, depending on how much space there is in the case um, I may well opt for modding it and try and put something else in now I'm gonna need to go away and do quite a bit of research on this um, on getting it powered on finding out where all these little bits and pieces and the springs and all this that and the other go um, and working out exactly how we should be putting this back together and if anything um, what's missing I really don't know uh, this is my first look at the internals of, of the Darwin um, I don't even know ne neither does does the owner know if this is still functioning now I can only assume I need to have a, a little look but one of these batteries is very 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 blown shall we say it's not a nice 
if you, I don't know the best way to describe this. If you look at this battery here on the bottom, the casing is all nice and tight and, and everything like that. The one on the top is full of air. Now, that cell may well be damaged. I don't know. I need to have a look at that. Um, purely because of how puffy it is. I'm assuming it should be like this one, all nicely, neatly packed and this that, and the other, but it's not. Um, and to me that means there's been some sort of a... I'm going to go away, do a bit of research, have a look, um, and then we'll pop back and tell you what we've uh, exactly what we found and, and, and what we've decided to do. Um, interesting, interesting, could go in another box. Um, you know, effectively, these. This is your control board. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Come back and take. Okay, so I've I've been away and looked uh, in a little more depth um, ab about the Darwin, and it looks like my first thoughts were correct. Um, the battery pack is canoeed. Um, has had a failure at some time in the past. Um, not can't describe the car. Can't even say the word. Not a major one. Put it that way. Um, but this battery has most definitely at some time um, shot its load. Um, the old pack's expanded and it has pushed it well and truly thermal. It's gone. It's it's knackered. Um, we'll just show you. Stick a bit. Yeah, across my battery there, I've got 4.2 on, on a little 18350. 18, yeah, that's right. Uh, if I stick my meters over these batteries, there is absolutely nothing there at all. Um, they are shot, well and truly gone. You should have some reading there. Um, even if it was, you know, very small voltage, I'm um, going straight across the battery terminals, and there is nothing there at all, not even a blip. So the battery pack's gone, which means um, there's not much more um, I can do with that until I speak to to the owner. Um, and uh, I know where the rest of this lot should go, and the little switch and all that sort of stuff, but. It is going to be pointless unless um, I want to invest in, in some more batteries. Uh, or he may well let me uh, me use the uh, DNA board. It's not a DNA board, is it? No, it's not. The board out of this mod um, into something else, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, it's been a bit of a non-starter today, really, hasn't it? Uh, I was hoping that I was going to get all this put back together and working. Um, not the case, unfortunately. I'll be back in two with something else. While my wood's still drying. Exactly the same way. And there we have that. through to there and all I need is the atomizer connection which I'll deal with next. So I've screwed the atomizer connector onto an old cartomizer in the vase to give myself a good position to work with.
Oh, I just need to tin everything up. Just give myself something to work on. Good tin. So it's the positive to the centre hole. And the negative to the outside. As easy as that. I see as easy as that. It never works like that normally. Just let that cool now. So for now, all I've done is I've popped the wires for the atomizer connector back through the hole, and I've twisted the sensor wire from the display to the positive for the atomizer connector. And now that wants to go through the hole for the positive output so it's going to be a bit tight I think Final solder I'm going to need to do. It's just going to be on the negative. Like so. I'm just going to trim this off because I've put far too much wire through there. Basically, that's the mod built, at least as far as electrics is concerned. All the wires are done now, so I'm going to have to test it before I fix all these things in place. Which I'm going to do right now. So, I'm trying to get all the things that could possibly short out away from the metal. And then add in a pair of batteries. Put the thing over, I must have it in the off position, so if I flick it across, I'll tell you it's early in the morning. So, so far so good. If I find the buttons for the display, that's not what I want, I want the other button. That's now telling me there is zero volts, if I hold the fire button down, I'm at 3.6. So, so far, so good. And if I carefully grab the adjustment, I'm still 3.6, isn't it? Because we turn it the wrong way, so I'll do it like that. There we go, well, 8.2. So that's working fine. So and we've got a temperature reading of twenty degrees in this room at the moment apparently. So all good. Let's 
means that with everything in position, I can now just epoxy everything in place, I think. Pop back from that later. And there we go. That is really coming along. I love the clock. It's a big old clock, that thing. Um, liking that. Uh, it only gets better. It really does only get better. Let me uh, slip in to our second little ad break and uh, I'll pop back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we're back. Um, those ads are way too short. I um, need more of them, um, I think. Purely so you can fill a glass during the break. Um, no time. Um, so, yes, that is absolutely coming along very, very good. Um, really looking forward to a, a lot going on this week. Um, the vape meets obviously uh, it'd, be, it'd be great to to get to somewhere relatively local um have a few beers have a chat and i believe we're going to be um potentially um mr dorm is, is going to be informing us um of if you like probably a little bit of a show i think that that may involve a couple of outside broadcasts but he's going to tell us a lot more about that um, a little bit later on in the week um, but hopefully I'll be taking some stuff down if we can get a live broadcast from from where I am um, which will be the Hope Pub in Cole Shulton from round about sort of seven half seven ish um, then we'll no doubt show it hopefully um, let me crack on or we're gonna rapidly run out of time um, this uh, this next little bit was was in response to uh, to a couple of questions that, that I've had um, of people, what people would like to see. Um, so I thought, seeing as, as my first two bits had, had totally, not failed, um, but I couldn't take them any further, I'd get this one in. <laughs> Bad timing or what? Um, I'm not going to edit that because I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Basically, because I'm waiting for me wood to dry and uh, and the mod repair um, can't be done due to duff batteries and I just do not have those battery packs available. I'm going to address something that people do keep asking me about the multimeter and the various settings and bits and pieces on there. Now, multimeters come in various shapes, sizes, guises, colors, god knows what, but they all have, if you like, in terms of a, a vapor and a, a modder, um, the same sort of functions. Most of them will have a, uh, if you like, a DC voltage setting. Now, my particular meter um, has an auto volt setting, so it will detect either AC or DC, so it's alternating current um, or direct current. Now DC is what we need to use for all of our batteries. Now you will see on my meter here it does actually come up with a little uh, DC setting. Um, once you're in your DC setting um, that is the perfect setting to meter out your batteries. Now whoop, if you can get it on the right thing this will show you here that my battery is 
round about 4.175, so nearly 4.2 volts, which I would expect from a fully charged battery. Um, obviously, you know, you can use it to monitor the state of your batteries if you, you know, fully charged pairs, this, that, and the other. Um, as I say, most meters, obviously meters will have an AC or a DC setting. Um, some multimeters have a DC sort of setting that varies in volts. Um, normally just whack it to 12 volt and, and you should be good. The next one round on the clock, um, which is our little ohm setting. Now that symbol there is for ohms and we measure resistance in ohms. Now this is ideal when we're, we're looking at um, making our coils. Let me bring a pre-made coil in. This one here, um, some multimeters you need to zero them. So this should pretty much it varies between 0.1 and 0.5 which is absolutely nothing. The flukes are very very good at, at sort of uh, reading pretty accurately what you would need to do if, if this come up with if you like two ohms you know or or you know 2.1 or whatever you've got to detract that from your final value that you're reading on your coil and I'll show you exactly what I mean I'm just gonna try let me flip that over so it's actually easier for me to do um, I'm just gonna go across this coil that is built here touch the two together and there I've got 2.7 now obviously I had if you like a 0.1 so that would be a 2.6 I think it's leveled itself out now the fluke is very very good at doing that so pretty much spot on I've got a 2.6 ohm coil there if your, your multimeter was, was out and, and was sort of if you like a, a 1 you know, if it, if it was one point something out, which it shouldn't really be, you detract that figure from your final, you know, so if it was 1.1 1 .1 out, <laughs> this is such a small wire, I can't even get a test on it. If it's 1.1 1 .1 out, you would, uh, you'd take your one out, which would, you know, that would be reading, if you like, at 3.7. Some of them, some of the cheap meters can be that far out. Um, but whatever your point is, or, or whatever the difference is, when you touch your two leads together, that's called zeroing your meter. And I've got point one. Jumps up and down. Settled. There we go. So that would be the figure you, you take away from your final reading on your coil. The other very, very good feature which uh, which we haven't used enough as Mark said last week is our continuity tester now the continuity tester can be used um, or, or as we like to know it the beepometer very very good for modders um, who are you know looking to if you like trace a fault basically when you touch your prongs together you get a beep the beep means that there is current flowing through that part of the circuit. If I go across a bit of wire here, straight bit of wire, it shows. Obviously I've got a circuit between there, there are no brakes. Now you can use that in a, in a number of ways um, and you can use that, um, you know, particularly with a mod, you can use it to test if you've got a short across your atomizer pin, if you touch the middle pin and the outer pin, I'm just gonna simulate a short. Let's just say I'm on the middle pin, outer pin, I get a beep, I know there's a problem with that atomizer. You can also use it for tracing a circuit through. So I know that I've got a positive here, I'll just touch the pause there, which is going through to my positive in on the board. So I know that that portion of the circuit is correct from my pause through to my pause on my board. And again, you can trace that all the way out to your to your pos of your um, of your ATI connection, depending on how your switch is going. Switches again, 
a great test for the beepometer. Go across your prongs on your switch. I'm just pressing the switch down here with the tin. And that switch is working. Lots of different uses for the multimeter, particularly with vaping. Um, showing just a few. I think that the, the prime three that we use. Um, it's very, very good if you are building a mod and you have a problem that you, you just do not understand. Um, the continuity test actually proves, if you like, your circuit. Um, because you've got to have a flow going all the way through. If you don't have a flow from the neg pin through to the neg pin. Now, I'm not going to have a flow through to the neg to the neg on this. I'm going to tell you why. Nothing there because it's going via the switch. But as soon as I press my switch... So I've proved that my negative circuit's okay, my switch is okay, and I'm getting an input through to the board. If I haven't got anything out, there's obviously something past that point of the board that's got the fault on it. So a very, very good diagnostic tool if you're, uh, if you're new to modding and um, you know wanting to, to play with a meter. The meters come in, say, various shapes and sizes from three, four pounds right the way up to sort of hundreds. Um, hope that's been useful. I apologise for, for the lack of uh, any making today. Um, absolutely uh, nailed with waiting for stuff to dry and a mod that the battery has, has gone on, which I didn't have one. I thought the Darwin would, would be a very, very nice put together job, but it didn't look that way. Back to me in the studio. Now, basically, I've Got everything done, it's tested now, I know it's working. So all I have to do now is fix all the components in place. And I need to make sure for things like this switch and this board in particular that they are completely insulated from this case. So to make life easy on this one, I'm just going to use my old friend the epoxy putty. Rather than add a layer of clear epoxy to this, I'm just going to add some of this to everything. And get it all done in one go, hopefully. So, just wet the blade to make it easier when you're cutting. That should do most of it, I think. So now it's just a matter of mixing the two together. And remember, if you've got anything like sensitive skin or if you're not sure, wear rubber gloves to do this. Because some people will have a skin reaction to this. Just give it a Good mix till you get an even colour throughout. Which really shouldn't take long at all. Just need to spread this out around the base for the battery holders first. Just pop it in, push it down, and it should be good to go there. Again for the board. push it in and I'm also pushing it up against this display to hold that in place a bit better. And 
a good layer of this. Let me just push that down into it. I've got to add this somewhere I can get to it at one end. I should do that. And you switch it the other. Just like that. Now I'm just going to have to mix up a second part, add that to the switches on it. So I've got a pretty good mix on there. do is just push these two through the holes Stuck to everything, wasn't it? And with a bit of cleaning up, that's going to be it. Pop back once it's all dry and ready to go. Now the epoxy is all nice and set, uh, so I'll basically finish the job. Uh, an interesting thing, the opposite is true of super glue, but the cheaper the epoxy, the quicker it seems to set. So there we have it with the time and seconds, there's the voltage. Uh, currently we're set at 5 volts. And I've got the temperature 22 degrees if I hold it. See, so it quickly goes up. So if I pop this on, it's probably not come out quite as straight as I would have liked, but. Firing away nicely at 5 volts. So, it's just going to be a matter of flattening everything down. Probably we need a job later on and pop my lid on. And then we have it. Working perfectly. And I'll probably just leave it on the time for most of the time. I think this is going to be a mod to be used in the house. It's rather large. Possibly a desk mod so at the time. But however you use it, it's up to you. Catch you all next week. And there we go an absolutely um, stunning stunning job that one um, love that to bits it's um, it does everything um, takes your temperature so uh, you know if you think you've got a uh, an illness you could only shove that probe in in a few places um, but it would take a very accurate temperature um, I do have to apologize it would appear um, that the chat roll program um, where people watch live um, seems to have gone a little bit wonky donkey i've got a clue what went on there um but uh, but no doubt if you are watching on the replay 
You don't. You don't care. Um, what have we got coming up this week? Um, obviously, uh, Marco is is away on on holiday, um, uh, so Vapor Scene will not be on Tuesday. However, the um, the team talk will be back tomorrow. Um, I believe I might be there as well. Um, be talking about all sorts of stuff and some funky new. Um, titles and everything um all good stuff uh followed by de talk um on wednesday we have um a vt talk um obviously dave dave's been doing some absolutely cracking shows since his return um absolutely stunned again um last week an absolute amazing show um fantastic format um really really good i really enjoyed that can't say that enough um and the man dave you need to stand up and and take a bow because you put so much work in into doing that um we all know what it is um take a bow please um followed on thursday by the haze hour uh friday um we have uh tim from y4 And then back on Sunday with uh, with Dave Kitson and his wonderful tackle box. Um, I must point out that obviously the the team talk will be starting uh, half an hour early um, on Thursday, so eight thirty. Uh, not Thursday. Um, let me have a look. Let me do 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 do. Thursday. Yes, I know. Sorry. Let me let me start again, shall we? Um, Tuesday will be as normal. Um, Thursday we're starting at eight thirty. Um, I think that is purely because of the uh, it's World Vaping Day, um, and I'm just looking at the notes. Um, da -da -da, and Team Talk will be back on Sunday. Um, Mr. Kitson is otherwise engaged, so reading live as we go. Um, obviously, lots of stuff going on. I'm going to be working on uh, the DNA Twenty mod at some point. Hopefully, um, trying to get that Darwin in in, in some reasonable shape. Um, what I might look at next week while I'm applying more coats of, of stuff to the uh, to the pipe is potentially looking at, at breaking that down and, and testing it with an external battery supply, this, that and the other, just to ensure that the mod is actually functioning how it should do and all that sort of stuff. Um, Mark will be on to something completely new next week. Um, with all that said, it is time to wrap this up. Again, apologies uh, for, the, um, for the problems in chat roll tonight. Um, hopefully that will all be sorted and fixed for tomorrow. Um, with all that, it's time. It's been emotional. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys, and good night. Tip with Gary Dibley.